Hi, I'm Jason and welcome to part two of setting up an Oracle Cloud free account so that we can run a WordPress website at zero cost to us. You might have noticed that I've switched computers since part one. I thought it might be easier for the majority of people out there to follow along with me on Windows. So in the last video, we set our Oracle Cloud account up and we were waiting for the emails to confirm that it was all successful. Well, I can say I did in fact get two emails Here's the first one stating my Oracle Cloud account name and username and then I got a second one confirming it was all set up and ready to log in. So let's go back to Oracle Cloud Free again and I'll do that by just opening up a browser and navigating to oracle.com forward slash cloud forward slash free. And then I can now sign in to Oracle Cloud. If you remember, in the first video, I set my cloud account name up as Super Pertinax, which is the same as my YouTube channel name. So let's go next. And it logs me straight in. It may ask you for your password and your email address as a login name. And while I'm here, let me just mention something else. The first time that you do log in, you will most likely get prompted to set up a method of secure verification. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to throw something up on the screen now. And basically it asks you to download the Oracle verification app to your mobile. And then it will give you a QR code to scan and Bob's your uncle, you're all set. So anyway, when you do finally get in, you're met with this screen with lots of options, but let's not get too carried away. We shall stick to the mission in hand and concentrate on create a VM instance, which we can find if I scroll down here. So here we are, create a VM instance, always free eligible. So let's click on that. And first of all, we can select a name for our VM instance. So I'm going to make it something more simplistic, like maybe JS Media VM. Not too worried about the placement or the security, but the image and shape, let's have a look at this. So I'm going to click Edit. And we can see by default it's already set to Oracle Linux 8. But that's to be expected. We are, after all, on Oracle. But we can change this. So to change it, I'm going to come over here and click Change Image and I'm going to select Ubuntu. Why Ubuntu? Well, let's just say I'm more familiar with Ubuntu and there is a massive following of support and help out there for it. So down here, we've got the different versions of Ubuntu ranging from 18.04 up to 22.04 being the latest one. There's also minimalistic versions of this. I want the, uh, the, the full version, so I'm going to go for the Canonical Ubuntu 22.04, so let's tick that box. And then we can come down here and say select image. Okay, with that image now selected, let's look at the shape. And the shape is basically the type of virtual machine, you know, the hardware it's going to be using. So let's go to change shape. Now by default, you are set to speciality in previous generation. And if you look down here, you're going to get a, a network bandwidth of half a gigabit, a 2 gigahertz processor. You're going to get 1 gig of memory. Or we could look at this Ampere ARM-based processor one. And I've done a bit of research into this, and I did actually go on the Oracle chat just to make sure that this was all legitimate. So if I went for Ampere, let's just select it. What we can have is we can have up to four CPUs and 24 gigs of RAM. I know it doesn't really explain it very well here, but in order to stay within the always free boundary, as long as you don't go above four cores, 24 gigs of RAM, it will remain free forever. Now, that means that you could, if you wanted, have two VMs with two CPUs each, and 12 gigabytes of RAM each. I'm going to be a bit greedy. I'm going to go for the uh, the full power. So I'm going to go four cores, 24 gigs of memory. And I'm going to select that 
as my shape. Okay, so scrolling further down, we need to take note of our SSH keys. So we can download these by clicking on Save Private Key and Save Public Key. So they've both gone to my Downloads folder. Okay, so we could just scroll down a little bit here and we can have a look at the boot volume. And we can change this, but I'm just going to leave the defaults as they all are. So I'm expecting uh, this boot volume to be 46.6 gigabytes, which I think is going to be more than adequate for putting up a, a WordPress website and filling it full of pictures. So we can then just down here, click on the Create. And then what you'll see here is on the left hand side it says provisioning. So that means what it's doing is it's setting up our uh, Oracle Cloud VM and you can see information starting to change over on the right. Um, it's installing the Ubuntu operating system, it's creating the space, the 48 gigabytes worth of space, it's setting up our 4 CPU processor, 24 gigs uh, machine basically. And then eventually, after a minute or so, you'll see it turn green and it says it's running. So our virtual machine is now ready, up and running. So the important things to note here is on the right hand side we can see the public IP address, which in my case is 143.47.238.162. And underneath we can see the username of Ubuntu. These are, this information is quite important because uh, the public IP address is the, the way we're going to connect through the internet to our virtual machine. And the username Ubuntu is going to be the username that's specified in order to log in to our command line. Because don't forget, at the moment, everything is going to be done through command line. And what I want to do is I want to add something more simplistic, like a control panel, so that we don't have to mess around in the future with command line entries all the time. So you remember in the first video, I said to you that the only expense, if you wanted to do it, was to add your own domain name. And what I mean by that is if you go off to one of the hosting companies like GoDaddy or Hostinger or Ionus, and you can actually purchase a domain name for a few pounds a year. Um, there's normally lots of special deals on where you can get them for literally a few pounds a year. And then uh, every year after that, they'll end up costing you around £10. If you've already got one, great, you can use it. Otherwise, if you were to stick to the public IP address, then obviously every time you accessed your WordPress website, you'd be going 143.47.238.162, which is a bit of a mouthful. It's certainly something that um, people aren't going to remember. So you could do that if you're just doing it for test purposes only. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to actually add a domain to it. And I'll show you what I mean. So if you wanted to get your own domain, let's do... Uh, a search for one of the web hosting companies. The one that I use at the moment is Ionus. So for example, if I was to just say Pertinax Media and then go and search for it. Uh, it says, good news, your domain is available pertinax.co.uk. There you go, one pound a year. And then it's 10 pound a year after that. So it's easy to to get your own domain name. Uh, once you've got your own domain name, what you'll end up with is a sign in to your hosters, whatever it may be, wherever you decide to buy it. Mine, like I just said, is uh, Iona. So I'm going to quickly sign in and I'll show you what I mean. Oh, Christmas is upon us. Domains and SSL. You'll, you'll normally have a, an area like this where you can go to your domains. And the one that you'll purchase will be in this list. As you can see, I've got a couple of domains. And the one that I'm going to use in this particular example is this one to one mediacouk And what I have done, uh, if, if I go into it, I can adjust the destination. So if I adjust the destination and go to my DNS, what I need to do is change. Now, I've... This might be a little bit confusing, but I've I've got the main domain and I've also set up a subdomain called admin dot one to one media dot co dot uk. I want to use this particular domain 
subdomain as my control panel login, my admin control panel login. The other one um, I want to use as um, accessing the actual WordPress website. So if I give somebody the uh, domain name one to one media.co.uk, that would be how they connected in to see my WordPress website. So going back to Oracle, if I co copy my public IP address, go back to my domains and I'm going to edit and I'm going to replace it with the IP address of my Oracle VM so that this domain now points to it and I'm going to save it and I'm going to do the same for my subdomain and save that. So that's a quick example of how I would go about pointing one of my domains to my new IP address of my Oracle VM. It's just going to make it easier for me going forward to be able to log into my website using a proper domain name. Okay, now we've got that out of the way, the next thing we need to be able to do is actually connect to our virtual machine through a kind of terminal window. And if you're on Windows, you would use a, a program called Putty. Um, so if you just do a search for Putty, and it is putty.org, and you download Putty, what you'll end up with is two programs. Let me just go back and do a search. I've already got them installed. So I've got the Putty app and I've got Putty Gen. We, we need both of those. So I'm going to open up Putty Gen first. Actually, let's open up the Putty app as well. Right, now remember those two private keys that we downloaded. What we need to do is load that private key into our Putty key generator. So I'm going to select load and then I'm going to go to my downloads. Let's do all files so I can see them. And the one that I'm interested in is the one with the dot key at the end. So I'm going to select that. Successfully imported the foreign key, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to say OK. And now I'm going to select save private key. I'm going to say yes. And let's put it in my documents and I'll just call it um, VM private key and save it. And now I can close this. I don't need it anymore. Coming over to the putty now, I need to put my IP address in there of the server I'm trying to connect to. So again, I'm going to copy my public IP address, paste it in here, and let's create a session. Let's call this um, Oracle VM so we can actually save this connection so we don't have to go through all this every time. And then on the left here, we can see we've got connections and we've got SSH. I'm going to select SSH and then I'm going to select auth. And then I am going to browse for that private key that I've just saved. And if you remember, it was in my documents and I called it VM private key. So I'm going to open that. Let's go back up here to the sessions. And the only other thing I need to do now is we need to log on with a username, the correct username, and we can see here it's called Ubuntu. So I'm going to say Ubuntu at, and let's save this now. And hopefully when we click open, we'll get a window that asks us to accept. And then we shall end up with a black screen like this which shows that we are Ubuntu at JS Media VM so we're actually connected to our VM server from our Windows server on a command line level basis. So congratulations we have now managed to connect to our VM through a terminal window from our Windows machine. I'm going to call it there and we'll carry on configuring and adding some more applications to our server in the next part. Thanks for watching.